If you have benefited from resources produced by G3 Ministries, would you consider donating to support us? Even a few dollars helps us to continue to publish free curricula, articles, podcasts, video resources, and more. Visit g3min.org give or open the G3 app to give a one-time or monthly donation. John Gill and the Sixth Trumpet, written by Chipley McQueen Thornton. For Gill, the blowing of the Sixth Trumpet finishes off the Eastern Empire. The Fifth Trumpet unleashed Antichrist in the form of the superstitions of Roman Catholicism and the false religion of Islam. The purpose was to destroy Rome's civil world system, Rome pagan as he calls it. Fundamental to his view, remember, is the split of the Roman Empire into an Eastern Empire and a Western Empire. This sixth trumpet is critical to, quote, destroy the whole Eastern Empire, end quote. See Gill's comments on Revelation 9.15. The sixth trumpet. The sixth trumpet releases four angels. They oversee the unleashing of some 200 million mounted troops to destroy one-third of mankind. In Gill's framework, these four angels are not angelic beings, but rather human messengers. They are called angels because of their power and might. He names them as the Turks or Muslims, casually mentioning that, quote, most interpreters agree, close quote. Siegel's comments on Revelation 9.15. Specifically, he sees this trumpet as fulfilled in the rise of the Islamic Ottoman Empire. They are numbered as four either because of their four names, Saracens, Turks, Tartars, and Arabians, or their four governments in Iconium, Baghdad, Aleppo, and Damascus. Gill even offers dates. He takes great pains to extrapolate the hour of their regime. An hour, which is the 24th of a day or year, in the prophetic style is 15 days. And a day is a year, and a month is 30 years, and a year is 365 years, and a quarter or 91 days. In all, 396 years and a hundred days, which is the precise time between A.D. 1057, when the Turkish Empire began, and A.D. 1453, in which year Constantinople was taken by the Turks and an end put to the Eastern Roman Empire, signified by the third part of men. Close quote. John Gill comments on Revelation 9.15. The killing of a third of mankind is the fall of the Eastern Empire. The breastplates of fire represent either sparkling iron breastplates or internal breastplates of wrath and fury. He repeatedly mentions that the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of their mouths refers to guns. He states, quote, Gunpowder is set on fire, is fitly signified by fire, smoke, and brimstone, close quote. John Gill comments on Revelation 9.17. The three plagues refer to vast numbers killed by gunfire. Their mouths refer to guns also. The tails refer either to the foot soldiers in the rear or to Muhammad, the false prophet who brings up the rear. Those who did not repent refer to the anti-Christian Western Empire. The popes and their followers saw what happened to the Eastern Empire, yet they continued in their superstitions and false religion. For instance, Gill states forthrightly, quote, Many of the popes were necromancers, given to the magic art, all sorts of uncleanness, not only simple fornication, but adultery, incest, sodomy, and all unnatural lusts. Brothel houses have been set up and licensed by authority 
which have yielded to the popes a yearly revenue of 40,000 ducats, who under pretense of granting indulgences and pardons and praying souls out of purgatory with other tricks, cheat men out of their money, plunder their estates, and devour widows' houses, and still go on in the same wicked way, and by their hardness and impenitence treasure up wrath against the day of wrath. Close quote. John Gill comments on Revelation 9.20. Reflections. Given those Romish atrocities, I can sympathize with Gill. It would be hard for him to imagine how wickedness could proliferate beyond that description. Yet everyone would agree the current state of the church today, Roman or Protestant, is wickeder. Interpretationally, we detect several issues. First, His earlier choice to lock into actual historical events is beginning to cause him problems. When the text doesn't seem to fit, he begins allegorizing elements of the text to make it work, which leads to, second, he waffles between a literal interpretation and a spiritualized interpretation with no explanation as to why the back and forth shift. For instance, he spiritualizes freely at points, The four angels are humans, the third of mankind is an empire, and the three plagues are gunfire. Yet he takes things literally at other points. The mounted troops are literal, although the number of them is not. As are the horses, but not their tails. These inconsistencies are bothersome. Third, I was surprised to see him engage in numerology. No more comment needed on that. Fourth, his take on gunfire is reminiscent of Hal Lindsey's references to helicopters and nuclear bombs. Enough said. Fifth, in naming of dates, while courageous, he also is difficult to take seriously. He didn't make his case from the grammar and syntax of the God-breathed text. From an interpretational standpoint, of all the sections I've studied of Gill thus far, this one appears the most problematic. It seems as if he's massaging the text to make his view fit. I suspect he will find his stride again in the seven vile judgments to come. Here, though, it seems too strained.